Hey class, Mr. G here going over some color theory stuff for you guys to know more about how color works. Welcome class, welcome to uh, the classroom. I'm Mr. G, your instructor. I'm a creator. And as a creator, I'm here to help you guys learn, grow, and see some cool and interesting stuff. Today we're gonna to talk about color and some terms around color theory. I was going around my room, I was going around, I've got so many books from over the years, um, Exploring Visual Design by Davis, uh, just a normal textbook, and then also this other book that's called Exploring Visual Design by Davis, uh, this one was printed back in 78, this one was printed in the early 2000s. I'm so glad that stuff has come so far over that time period. So, but color and the way that colors work and how things are used and how color is used in the art world has not really changed a whole lot in general. Um, really things started to change in, uh, I guess the last major development was the 1800s when we went from having just traditional oil paints that had to be handmade, handcrafted using oil and ground pigment to you could go to a store and you could buy a tube of paint. Uh, acrylic paints became more accessible for people to go out and purchase tube paint and because they were able to do that, that was um, the start of not having traditional setups on traditional, like a person in a studio creating a painting. Uh, case in point, Vincent Van Gogh, one of the uh, just brilliant minds of the Impressionism movement, being able to take paints, go out, paint a painting of, of that moment, and, and then sell the painting if it was good, which a lot of his stuff, we, like now, and I say we in the grand sense of just everybody in general. Uh, but back in the day, his stuff was just trash. That was the common thought pra common thought of his work because it was quick. It was gesture-based. It wasn't... Um, people didn't look at it for the vibrancy of the color, the movement of characters. There's a lot of stuff that was good, uh, but at the time, nobody really cared. All right, so going back to color, things that we need to go over is... I'm going to... All right, so we're going over the color wheel first. So starting off with the color wheel, you have, okay, for the color wheel, now typically for a color wheel, you usually have red or yellow at the very top, and um, let's be simplistic with it. Most people do that because the sun is up high and shadows are down low. That's kind of the gist as to why they do it that way. Now, that does vary from some color wheel to color wheel. Sometimes it's yellow at the top, sometimes it's red, and then it goes into a cycled pattern. Now the thing with uh, the color wheel, the color wheel itself, I mean, you could put blue at the top, it's really not changing anything, as long as the colors are in sequence order. That is what is imperative. That in three places, boop, 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 uh, that in, those, in three places you have the primary colors, which is your reds, your yellows, and your blues, and then in between those colors in the correct sequence order is your secondary colors, your greens, purples, and orange. Now, red, yellow makes orange, blue and red make purple and yellow and blue make green now as long as you have those colors in the right sequence order you're fine you have everything that you're supposed to have uh now one of those things in art class that most people have issues with is sometimes we'll talk about the hue of something the way that they're the colors are showing intensity or showing brightness or showing dullness all these are descriptive words that are referencing back to the color itself. Hue being one of those questionable ones that people are just like, I don't get what that word is. Uh, it's a British term, uh, Old English for color. That's it. Um, now, you have your primaries, your secondaries, and then you also have your tertiaries or your intermediate colors. I like to say tertiary because it's like one, two, three. It makes more sense to me. Uh, some art teachers say intermediate, it's still the same thing. And what that is, it is the colors that are between the primary color and the secondary color. So looking over here at the wheel, you have the red and then you have blue. Those are your two primaries. In between the red and the blue, you have purple. Purple is your secondary color. Now. Between purple and red, you have your tertiary color, your intermediate colors, in between of those primary colors and secondary colors. Now, when you're dealing with those colors, you are doing primary language first, which means 
that the color in between red and purple is red purple. Crayola's just gotten a lot more creative and come up with like, um, this one they've got is rocking red violet. I like to say purple. All right. Before I get any flack from any of my other art art people uh, that I that I that watch this, um, I know these are really awful crayons. These are these are horrible. These are these are not good. I know that. Um, the reason I'm using them is because I'm going to melt them, and I'm not going to waste money and buy a whole box of Crayola colors uh, that I'm going to melt. So, so those are your those are your tertiary colors. All right now. Looking over here at the, at the color wheel again, we have complementary colors. Now, complementary colors are going to be colors that are opposite of its pairing on the color wheel. Now, for those complements, you want to be selective in the way that you're using complements. So now, you can use something that is some semi-adjacent. So, with blue and orange being complementary colors, you can also use blue and yellow, and it still looks good. Two primary colors, but they're a far enough off, off from each other to where uh, the darkness of the blue and the lightness of the yellow work well together. It's a harmonious balance. You have two colors that aren't really competing uh, because they're in two different fields. So next, we're going to talk about tints and then shades. All right, so for tints, uh, tints as in T-I-N-T, not T-E-N-T, -E that's a tint. We're talking about tints as in the lightness of a color. So to get a tint, you're going to add white to a color. And by adding white to the color, it's going to lighten that color up. So I have two colors in the red spectrum range that have both have white added to them. For one, we have a pink crayon, crayon, and then we have a, this one's berries and cream, which is going to be your purple, uh, reddish purple, uh, with white added to it to give it that uh, that semi-purple color, but it's light. Uh, so using that, uh, using tints and then shades is by adding black to a color. And by adding the black to a color, you're going to have a darker version of that color. By adding those variants, that gives you a lot more control over the colors that you use. So by having... Uh, having white in a color gives you that lightness, it gives sometimes a pastel -y look depending on the type of coloring that you're using. Adding black to a color gives it that shade, that darkness, that hue. Uh, one, of the reason, one of the main things that I add um, using tints and shades for is when I'm discussing shadows, how shadows are going to be blending and reflecting around an object. If you hold your hand above a piece of paper, you can usually see one to two cast shadows from the light above going past your hand to the paper below. And when you look at those shadows and determine that the color that those shadows are, if you have a piece of construction paper or picture, put the picture, um, seeing those color changes, that helps your students, that helps you as artists see that those changes in the colors and what you need to add to the color to create that color, that shade, that tint, that tone, or um, for your piece. So look and analyze how the tints and tones are used in the work that you're doing. Also think about the way that those shadows are being incorporated into that piece. All right, next term is the analog is analogous colors. So analogous colors are colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. So on the color wheel, a couple analogous color schemes are your warms, your warm colors, and your cool colors. So warm colors are your yellow, red, and orange, because it's the sun, it's warm. Uh, then your cool colors are your greens, purples, and blues. Now, not all greens I would call cool colors, and not all, um, and not all warm colors I would put in, in the warm spectrum, specifically like the darker versions of red. Uh, and that's something that you can just kind of play with. It depends on the piece that you're working on. If you're doing a piece, oh, hey, look, an example. If you're doing a piece like this, some of these I would consider, I would consider this overall to be in the warm spectrum, uh, mainly because they look like colors that would exist in the daytime. Now, as colors exist in the daytime, uh, that I would call warm colors. Now, does that mean that blues could work in the daytime? Yeah, they do work in the daytime, but something that is a lighter
something like this color, uh, something, so for looking at this painting as an example, you have dark colors and you have light colors in the, in the blue spectrum there. The, the lighter blues, I would not necessarily call them warm colors, but I would put them in, a, in an image that is warm because it still fit. I'm just going to cut that whole section out because that just doesn't, no. I'm going to slide that one out and just say, no, that didn't work. I don't think that works. The final definition that we're going to go over is neutral colors. And neutral colors are your blacks, whites, and let's just put gray in there too just for, just for kicks. Uh, those colors exist outside of the color wheel spectrum. Uh, the reason that they exist out of the spectrum is because white exists outside the spectrum because it is a combination of all colors in, in the entire spectrum squished into one. Well, how do you get that? Well, the reason is, uh, let's look at Pink Floyd. Alright, so on Pink Floyd's album cover, you have a prism. In the, in the middle of that prism uh, is a piece of glass, a piece of quartz. It's a clear, transparent uh now, as this now for this prism, you have on one side you have white, on the other side you have a rainbow. The white light enters the prism and breaks up into the different levels of color, the different spectrums, because it can be um, the prism widens the light beam, which show, which changes the light as it comes in, and it opens up all the different color aspects of the spectrum by breaking up that light space. Black is the opposite of that. Uh, black is a complete absence of color. There, there is nothing. It's like a void uh, as far as color goes. Now, gray, that weird spot that's in between, um, think of it more as a tint or a tone uh, of the neutral colors. It's the easiest way that I, I found to, to kind of discuss it in class because they're like, well, this is absent, this is complete, well, what's this? Because gray's not really a color either. It's just, well, it's a, it's a shade, it's a tint, it's a tone. There's, there's so many other, there's those words that just kind of fit, and it's, I don't know, that's just how it works for me. On my crayons. Now, as I'm putting these things away, uh, there was a thing on Facebook, how do you pronounce the word for this thing? And I know the box says crayons and I usually try and say crayons um, because I've been yelled at by other people I'm not naming names uh, because people will say no that's not how you say that or whatnot. Um, I've heard crayons, crowns and um, crayons. Crayons is actually another um, crayon, crayon thing you know, it's a box of colors. Let's put it that way. Let's, that's what these should be called. They're called colors because there's all the colors. Art colors, because you're gonna make art with them usually. Yeah, let's let's change the name. Let's now, once you've discussed color theory and gone over the color wheel, <laughs> now we gotta start putting that into practice. Now for me, I use a couple worksheets to discuss color theory, at the top we have the color wheel, we have some notes at the bottom, uh, but there's also a ton that you can find online as well. Um, both these I made, but you know, it's fine. Um, on the bottom, always put the definition so that you have a running set of notes that you're working on. And then you have the color wheel itself. Now for me, the color wheel can be built a couple different ways. Number one, you can use your colors to color in the color wheel. Or, what I like to do is get magazines and the students have to cut up magazines and actually build the color wheel themselves that way. Why do that? Because it forces them to scan for color that already exists rather than going to a box, finding the color itself, and just coloring it. Yeah, it's, no. I'd rather go to the colors. Now, one thing I like about this sheet more than the others is, is that you can use this scale. So over here we have blue, violet, blue, violet, red, violet. And as the colors go towards the center, you can incorporate your shades, tints, and tones into that. So as it starts out on the edge here, start off with the darker end of the spectrum of your red, violet. So you want to find something that's really really dark and rich like a like a dark merlot wine why do i use that because we know what the color is um 
And then as it goes forward, you get down to that like raspberry yogurt color. And so then you get that shade, that sh that shade, that, that range of color. And seeing that range of color helps the students understand, helps you understand as artists how color works better because you can see that variation, those interpretations of color, which is always important. Now, for me, project-wise, when doing color, I always like to talk about mandalas, radial symmetry, uh, and designs that work around a centralized element of art. And we're going around an art piece that shows a centralized cohesion of color, lines, shapes, and shades. For you, got, for you, uh, for my art people out there, I'm working on several different projects that, that are doing with color. But overall, I wanted to get you guys started on how color theory works, what you need to know about it, because there's always questions about color theory. I hope this gave you some some understanding, a better. I hope that this gave you some better understanding how color theory works. There's a bunch of other stuff in there. I hope you guys learned something today about color theory and how we can apply color to our artworks. And if you guys have questions, raise your hand down in the comments below as always. And uh, other than that, I'm going to go work on some more artwork. And I'll see you guys next class. Later, guys.